Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy, Four Nerds by Nerds, hanging out with... Nerdarchist Ted. And today we're going to add a new player race to your D&D game based off of Goat Folk, as well as some other options. Jump down to the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy the newsletter, get weekly gaming tips, as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. All right, so we're gonna we're going to be diving into Order of the Wisdom. Do you want to add more Minotaurs and Go Focus a player race into your game for Fifth Edition Dungeons and Dragons? This is how you're going to do it. So um, this uh, the credits for this is written by, edited by, and layout by Doug Vahovic, and our cover art is Nelson Vieira. So uh, you know the first thing that we we're going to go into with our our goat focus, we have several components, right? We have magic items that, that have been made for them. We have uh, a, a special NPC from them that has been made. We also have you know monst a monster and some villains that have been made, an order that goes along with it. There's a whole adventure that's like you know five pages long with a, a great map with multiple rooms or many rooms, I should say. Uh, it's a it's a Really cool piece. Yeah, so first up, you know, whenever Nerdarchy creates magic items, we call that our Mage Forge. And we've got one, two, three, three four, four, five, six, seven magic items? Eight, Eight magic items. Uh, so, you know, what we got in here, and uh, you can see the Caged Eye, Bloodstained Crown, the Mantle of the Predator, the Bloodshot Lenses, Helm of the Horned King, Eyes of the Hunted, Staff of the Seeker, and Nanny's Milk. <laughs> Nanny's Milk just sounds gross. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we've got magic items that are ranging, I think, from uncommon to, to very rare here. Uh, they do a lot of different things. And, uh, like, for instance, the uh, Bloodstained Crown is something that you can actually use to cause madness to somebody. And you can use multiple charges on... Well, not multiple charges, but if you attack them with this, this item multiple times, it determines how much madness they get. If they keep failing their saving throw, at first, you know, it's just short-term madness. Then it goes into long-term madness. And then it becomes a permanent flaw on your character sheet. Or on the monster's character sheet, I guess, as the, the case may be. <laughs> Depending upon how you know who you use it on and what have you. Uh, Nanny's mo Milk is an uncommon potion that is used to, you know, resist cold. So, not bad. Uh, we've got the, the, the caged eye is really cool because that is taking one of our goat folk, the, the wizened, and uh, basically taking one of their eyes and putting it in a cage that then becomes a magic item. It's, it's a little bit gross, but, you know, it's something that's done by their enemies. Yeah, and then the, uh, the, the mantle of the predator... As you know, bloodstained furs that's supposed to aid you in combat. So I think that's kind of cool. Yeah, there's uh, there's there's two different sets of eyes. So lenses that you put on your eyes, which are pretty cool. We have the staff of the seeker, which is which is another one. You know, all these magic items pretty much require attunement, except for uh, except for the potion, obviously. You know, from there we get into our monster, and that is the spell eater minotaur. So there's a there's a handful of monsters out there that you know certain levels of magic or spells just don't work on them, and since we set up this organization that are against these goat folk, and let's face it, their leader is Baphomet, the creator of Minotaurs. Let's make a version of Minotaurs that just shrug off magic, and that's what we wind up having here. Yeah, uh, and. Uh, Ted actually created the monster here, uh, and then you know Doug uh, Vahovic, or our chief and editor, kind of goes through and cleans everything up for us. And I think you guys did a really good job. This is a you know a really cool monster. It's you know it's what you expect, right? A minotaur, a typical minotaur, except for it's got all these arcane brands all over its body. So when you hit it with magic of third level uh, of of a third level slot or lower, it just absorbs it. These brands kind of flare with magical energy. And then as a reaction, you know, it can do this as a reaction. And then on its next turn, it can then infuse its weapon attack with damage from that, depending on how much, uh, how high of a spell level you used on it determines how much extra damage it's going to be able to do to you. So the fact that, you know, you've used your action to use magic on it, it doesn't affect it. You've now made it more powerful. So when it hits next, it's going to hit harder. Yeah. kind of nice. 
your magic f fuels it. Um, so, you know, we also, in this product, we also create a friend or foe, which uh, is our NPCs. And here we have Managalgal. <laughs> M M Maloon Gagal. <laughs> I don't know how you want to pronounce it, but you know, it's the agent of the wizard. And yeah, this is an NPC, one of our goat folk who uh, goes out into the world to try and protect and procure knowledge and is an agent against the labyrinth. The labyrinth is this organization of uh, Baphomet. Me you know, there's Minotaurs involved, of course. And, you know, they're they're always trying to get at our wizard and, and find their secret stronghold and break them. So the, uh, the the spellcaster here is is pretty cool, uh, you know a lot of uh, use, useful stuff. And anytime you create an NPC, you want to give him some some cool stuff. So he's got the ability to sculpt spells. Yeah, he, he, yeah, he's a bit of an invoker. So uh, with that, we go into terrible terrain, and uh, this th this is fantastic because this is essentially a whole adventure. That you can just drop right in, right into into a game with, and it's it's based on using an agent of of the labyrinth, one of these spell eater minotaurs, and it's the whole setup is it's it's kind of easy going until you get to its treasure, but its treasure really is there as a trap, and then it activates the dungeon, and and then the trick it's easy to get in, the hard part is getting out. So that's that's going to be the gist of it. And so any of your adventure hooks are going to be along those lines of, you know, luring the, your players in to try and get whatever it is that uh, Kubers has in his lair. So as I said, it's you know five five pages with a you know detailed map that you can be able to use. It's got you know ran, random encounters that you can put in there. It's got you know what's in each of the the variety of different rooms. So it's a it's a cool adventure to be able to use. There's yeah, lots of traps, secret doors, magical effects. Uh, it's really meant to confound. So now, like actually getting into our goat folk, the race themselves. Um, we've got we've got titles like stubborn and willful, keepers of knowledge, cursed origin, <laughs> cursed origin. So we had done a video where we where we kind of came up with this idea of this of goat folk and that they had they had were originally just humans but they were really advanced arcanists and and spellcasters and they discovered a ritual and they decided to enact it not fully knowing what they were going to do and they brought Baphomet into the world into Ulthgania our our campaign setting and realizing the error of their ways they you know, they pulled all their magical might to send him back and banish him from this realm but you know for you know for for that offense for refusing his gifts he he, he cursed them you know as uh, as he, as as he was cast out and so they you know they would forever be known as Uriamnos so uh, the way I guess the way that the the, the actual stats and this is the write up uh, came about was we had did a video about the wizard and kind of made up things on the fly, and then Doug watched that and was really inspired and he went back and he and he kind of like re envisioned a lot of the stuff that we talked about and and refined it. Uh, there's a quote in here from Baphomet. We have uh, you have the audacity to summon the Horn King into this world, and now that my gifts lie before you, reject them. You ins you insignificant old goats, and that's when he curses them to be a parody of what he considers to be like the perfect being, the Minotaur. So you know the the parody. You know you've got the bull, strong, powerful, determined. You've got goats. You know willful, stubborn, and insignificant next to next to a bull so comparing the two it's like the oriamnos are a joke in comparison to the minotaur yeah so the uh the oriamnos they they kind of hold this this valley where they have a village and, the, and, the, and their people exist kind of like secluded from the rest of the world and in you know in that valley they have a secret stronghold where they kind of store and and protect knowledge and like what their big thing is to they they become basically the enemy of, of Bahamut, and that you know racially, that's you know that's one of the reasons why they exist is to stop him. Baphomet, not Bahamut. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a different guy. <laughs> <laughs> different guy all together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, Baphomet. So the Oriamnos get things like book cunning, natural climber, 
uh, Oriamnos Resistance, Sure-Footed. So they get some cool abilities that they're going to be able to, to use if you make one as a PC. Yeah, I mean, their, their ability score increases are Wisdom plus 2 and uh, Constitu Constitution score plus 1. They're a little bit lo longer lived than humans. They lived about 150 years old. Uh, they, they're disciplined, so their alignment tends towards lawful. They're medium-sized creatures. They have a base speed of 30. Book cunning is whenever you make an intelligence or counterintelligence history check, you have access to research materials related to the subject. You are considered proficient in the skill and add double your proficiency bonus to check instead of the normal proficiency bonus. So they're, they're really good, you know, navigating through a library. Natural climber, the proficient in, in the athletic skill, which is a, is a bit a bit odd for you know characters that tend to be scholars and wizards, but yeah, they're also goats. So like you know, it was one of those things that you know we we toyed around with this uh, you know uh, off camera of like, well, they're they're mountainers, you know, by where they live. So if you don't have this, it's kind of bad. Yeah. Uh, uh, so the Oriamanos resistance, you have advantage on saving throws against cold, and you have resistance to cold damage. And then we have short footed, which they just have advantage on saving throws against being knocked prone uh, due to their goat heritage. And their languages, they can speak, read, write, and comment, and one additional language. So then, you know, Doug went ahead and created a background for someone who belongs to the Order of the Wizened. So the fact that, you know, there is this you know, secret stronghold of Maktaba Hold. You could technically be a non-goat folk and have found your way there and you know, work there as a background. So totally, uh, totally a thing. And there's the stats for that. Well, also too, like you say, say your character somehow has run afoul of the labyrinth, their enemies. Then it would make sense that you might, you know, fall in. Maybe they, maybe they took you in. Maybe they protected you, or maybe in your research to figure out, you know who the labyrinth is, what the labyrinth is, uh, because maybe something in your backstory happened. So you, you've kind of made enemies of them or you consider them your enemies. So falling in, you know, with the order would make sense. So, so that, that's another way that I could see like a non Orianus becoming a part of this order and having this background. True. Then we get into the labyrinth itself. This is an organization that is, you know, that was, uh, built by cultists for Baphomet to, uh, get his revenge essentially like he wants to see the wizen brought down he wants to see them destroyed uh they they slighted him and you know, even worse they've kind of like gone on to kind of prosper a little bit more uh we have some details about you know what a cultist might look like so their their beliefs is civilization is weak and any oppose are prey to be slaughtered some of their goals are to find the past to mctaba hold and mislead the order of the wizened so uh, this is just some of the options that are there. Yeah, and then uh, we also have Labyrinth Lords. So there, you know, short paragraph write-ups for... Um, we've got Silat Yatar, uh, which is a, a warlock servant of Baphomet. We also have Akit, Kakiliak, Ermok. And like some of these already like have listed that they have some of the magic items that exist within here. So like you know, oh, you want to use this guy, you can you can do this. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, and, you know we we've got humans, orcs, demons, you know, amongst them. So it's just like and cool, fun things that you could add into your game. And speaking of, you want to add these into your game? There's a really easy way to do it. If you become a patron at the at our ten dollar level or below, you're going to receive some of these benefits. Well, ten dollars you get everything. You ten dollars, yes, at ten dollars you get everything. Uh, at the lower tiers, you get some of the stuff. To, you know, depending, you know, the details are over on our Patreon. There will be a link in the description. You guys can check out. Well, what do you think? Do you like this idea? Let us know. We got a place for it. That's down in the comments below. While you're at it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can head over to nerdarchy.com and check us out there. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.